The Uncharted movie is finally here. If you've never played the games or need a quick refresher on the story before going in, don't worry, this video has you covered. This is a complete recap of the story of Nathan Drake from the entire Uncharted series. The Uncharted game series started back in 2007 with Uncharted Drake's Fortune. That game introduced players to treasure hunter Nathan Drake, who alongside reporter Elena Fisher, uses the coordinates inscribed on a family ring worn around his neck to recover the coffin of his ancestor, Sir Francis Drake. Inside the coffin was Francis Drake's diary, which contained coordinates to the lost city of El Dorado. Nate links up with his old friend and mentor Victor Sully Sullivan and the two ditch Elena, fearing the danger their treasure hunt would bring, and head off to El Dorado. After following the coordinates, Nate and Sully discover that El Dorado was not a city, but in fact a golden statue taken to a nearby island. Also looking for El Dorado was a team of mercenaries led by Gabriel Roman, who Sully owed a massive debt to. They arrive and shoot Sully, seemingly killing him, and Nathan narrowly escapes. He then teams back up with Elena to continue his treasure hunt. The two use Sully's seaplane, which is shot down by Roman's men on their flight to the island. On the island, Nate and Elena discover that Sully had survived the gunshot due to Francis Drake's diary stopping the bullet, and was now held captive by Roman. Sully had spent his time trying to mislead Roman's team to buy more time for Nathan and Elena. Nate and Elena rescue Sully and continue on their search. They find a treasure vault and discover the body of Francis Drake, who they assume died searching for the treasure. Meanwhile, Roman's crew is fracturing, as his men are being killed off by what they believe is an island curse. This is confirmed when some of Roman's men run into Nathan's team and are attacked by mutated humans. Nate and Elena escape the attack and discover an abandoned German bunker. It turns out the Germans had sought the statue during World War II, but were cursed by it and became the mutated monsters. Sir Francis Drake, realizing how dangerous the statue was, tried to keep it on the island by destroying ships and flooding the city, trapping himself on the island and dying in the process. Nathan's new mission became preventing Roman from taking the statue off the island at all costs. But unfortunately, he isn't fast enough. Roman and his team reach the statue, but Roman's Lieutenant Navarro, knowing of the curse, tells Roman to open the statue himself. Upon opening the statue, it's revealed to be a sarcophagus, containing an infected mummy that spread the mutagenic virus. Roman begins to mutate and Navarro kills him, then takes over Roman's men and has them bring the sarcophagus back to their ship where he plans to sell the virus to the highest bidder. Nate sneaks aboard the ship and defeats Navarro, sinking him and the sarcophagus to the bottom of the ocean. Having saved the world from the threat of the virus, Nathan, Elena, and Sully grab some treasure and leave the island with Nate and Elena striking up a romance. And now I want to cut in real quick and tell you about this video sponsor. So I've got a game you can play right now on your phone, and it's one of the best and most talked about games around. I'm talking about Raid Shadow Legends. In Raid Shadow Legends, you unlock and play as champions who have their own unique backstory and lore and come with their own awesome and specialized abilities. And the best part is it's a mobile game, so you can play it in bed while you're waiting in line or while you're falling out the back of a cargo plane and plummeting toward the earth. There are so many different game modes to choose from, and right now I'm trying my hand at some of the dungeon bosses. I can take down the Arcane Guardian with ease, but the Force Guardian, Skavik, and Hellraiser really up the difficulty. And don't even get me started on Fyro and his shield. I personally really love how unique and intricate the different skills and abilities of the different champions are. Heading over to the portal and summoning a new champion and then learning all of their abilities and strategizing how I can use them in battle leads to endless possibilities. Raid's got a ton happening this month with a fresh rotation of the Brutal Hydra boss and a ton of events and tournaments every single day, including some special Valentine's Day events where you can get your hands on a brand new legendary champion. And if you want an even bigger head start, all you have to do is hit the link in the description. New players will get the free champion Virgis, 200,000 silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. You can find all of these rewards right here in your inbox, but it's for the next 30 days only. Once you're in, you can find me under the name Recap and Chill, and if you're fast enough, you can join my clan. And it's that easy. Just click the link in the description, and I'll see you in the game. In Uncharted 2 Among Thieves, two years have passed since Nathan Drake's hunt for El Dorado, and he and Elena have since broken up. Nate is approached by former associate Harry Flynn and his girlfriend Chloe Fraser, secretly also an associate of Nathan, to find and steal an ancient Mongolian oil lamp that belonged to Marco Polo. 
Upon breaking into a museum to steal the lamp, Nathan and Flynn discover that Marco Polo's fleet had been shipwrecked in Borneo and was carrying the infamous Sintamani Stone, which is a wish-fulfillment jewel from both Buddhist and Hindu traditions. With the location of the stone in hand, Flynn double-crosses Nate and has him arrested. Chloe seeks Sully's help in busting Nate out of prison, then reveals that Flynn was working for a Serbian war criminal named Zorin, who was seeking the stone's power. The stone was located in the fabled city of Shambhala, located somewhere in the Himalayas. On their journey, Nate and Chloe run into Elena and her cameraman Jeff, who were also tracking Zorin on their own for a journalism story. Zorin's team attacks the group, killing Jeff and forcing Nate to reveal the location of Shambhala. Chloe fakes a betrayal to infiltrate Zorin's team while Nate and Elena escape. Nate pursues Zorin and Chloe on a train which he fights his way through and derails over a cliff, narrowly surviving. Nate is rescued by a Tibetan Sherpa named Tenzin, who brings Nate to his village. At the village, Nate and Elena are reunited and introduced to Carl Schaefer, a German explorer who had sought after the stone decades prior. Zorin's men attack the village and kidnap Schaefer, taking him to a nearby monastery. Nate and Elena follow them to the monastery where a mortally wounded Schaefer warns Nate that the stone must be destroyed before Zorin can obtain its powers. Zorin and Flynn's team corners Nate and Elena and forces Nate to unlock the entrance to Shambhala underneath the monastery. Upon entering Shambhala, the group is attacked by the city's ancient guardians who slaughter many of Zorin's team, allowing Nate, Chloe, and Elena to escape. As they explore the city of Shambhala, Nate, Chloe, and Elena discover that the Sintamani stone was derived from the sap of an ancient tree of life. Anyone that drank the sap would be given inhuman powers. And that's when Flynn arrives, left for dead by Zorin in the Guardian attack, and betrayed by his girlfriend Chloe. He attacks the trio with a grenade, blowing himself up and critically injuring Elena. While Chloe looks after Elena, Nate heads to the Tree of Life, where Zorin drinks the sap and becomes nearly invincible. Nate is able to explode parts of the tree to defeat Zorin, leaving him to be killed by the Guardians. As the explosions cause the entire city of Shambhala to crumble and collapse, Nate, Chloe, and Elena make their escape. Back at the Tibetan village, Chloe bids the group farewell. Nate confesses his continued love to Elena, and the two share a kiss. In Uncharted 3 Drake's Deception, the backstory of the relationship between Nathan and Sully is revealed through flashbacks. Nate was actually an orphan who adopted the name Drake as a teenager. He broke into the Museo Martimo in Cartagena, but while there he comes across Sully and a woman named Catherine Marlowe, who wanted the ring for themselves. Marlowe's henchmen capture Nate, but Sully helps free him and takes the teenager under his wing as a protege. In the present, two years have passed since the events of Uncharted 2. During that time, Nathan and Elena have gotten married, but recently separated. And that's when Catherine Marlowe and her associate Talbot re-enter Nathan and Sully's lives, stealing Sir Francis Drake's ring from Nate. Catherine Marlowe is revealed to be the leader of the Order, a secret society originally created by Queen Elizabeth I in the 16th century. Another previous member of that order, Sir Francis Drake. But he abandoned it after discovering the Order's true purpose was to control Britain's enemies through espionage, deception, and fear. Like Queen Elizabeth in the 16th century, Marlowe had a similar quest for the Order to find the lost city of Ubar, also known as the Atlantis of the Sands or Irem of the Pillars. 3,000 years ago, King Solomon captured jinns, supernatural demon creatures, and imprisoned them within a brass vessel, then cast the vessel into Ubar's water system. This tainted the water, causing its drinkers to suffer hallucinations and go mad, which eventually led to the city's demise. In the present, Marlowe wanted to recover this vessel to use against the Order's enemies. Marlowe captures Sully and forces him to lead the Order to Ubar. With the help of his estranged wife Elena, Nate sneaks aboard Marlowe's cargo plane and destroys it, parachuting down into the middle of the desert. With the help of Bedouin tribe leader Salim, Nate is able to rescue Sully and the two continue their mission to stop Marlowe. In Ubar, Nate and Sully confront Marlowe as she uses a giant winch to recover the vessel from the waters. Nate destroys the winch, but the entire city begins to collapse. Talbot and Marlowe are killed in a sinkhole, with Marlowe taking Sir Francis Drake's ring down with her. Salim recovers Nate and Sully from the collapsing city, and the two prepare to travel home. Sully then gives Nate a pep talk and hands Nate back his wedding ring that Nate had thought he'd lost after separating from Elena. And so Nate returns to Elena and the married couple reconcile. The trio then board Sully's brand new seaplane, a replacement for the one destroyed in the first game, and return home. In Uncharted 4 A Thief's Inn, we flash back to the childhood of Nathan Drake and his older brother Sam. Their archaeologist mother died when they were young, and their father sold all of their mother's belongings and gave the brothers up, forcing them to live in an orphanage. 
as teenagers Nate and Sam sneak away from the orphanage and track down their mother's belongings, meeting her old friend Evelyn. Evelyn gives the brothers their mother's journal and tells them about their mother's theory that Sir Francis Drake had heirs and that their mother had been searching for the pirate utopia Libertalia. When Nate and Sam leave, they decide not to return to the orphanage, but instead take on the Drake name and become treasure hunters. Years later, and 15 years before the events of present day, Nathan and his older brother Sam are hunting for the treasure of the pirate Henry Avery. Alongside their partner Rafe, the brothers infiltrate a Panamanian prison to access the former cell of Avery's first mate. Nate finds a hollow St. Dismas idol, but before the trio can make their escape, the prison's warden, who aided them in their entry, demands a cut of the treasure to ensure their release. Rafe kills the warden and the prison erupts into chaos. While Nate and Rafe manage to escape, Sam is shot by the guards and presumed dead. In the present, Nathan Drake has retired from his treasure hunting ways and is trying to live a simpler life with his wife, Elena. And although he's happy, he does miss the adventure of the old days. And that's when Nate's brother Sam shows up, alive and well, explaining that he had survived the gunshots and spent the last 15 years in prison. He had recently escaped with drug lord Hector Alcazar, but if he didn't find Henry Avery's treasure, Alcazar would have Sam killed. Nate agrees to help his brother and lies to Elena about leaving for a work trip. With the help of Sully, the Drake brothers steal another Dismas idol from an illegal auction in Italy. This leads to them crossing paths with Rafe, who was similarly back on the hunt for Henry Avery's treasure. Using clues from the Dismas idol, the Drakes and Sully eventually discover a map to Libertalia, the pirate utopia where Henry Avery and other pirate captains pooled together and stored their treasure. Before the trio can depart for Libertalia, Elena shows up and confronts Nathan, furious at her husband for lying to her. Elena leaves in anger and Nate sends Sully after her to ensure her well-being. Upon reaching Libertalia, the brothers are confronted by Rafe. Rafe reveals that he had released Sam from prison two years ago to aid in his search for Henry Avery's treasure. And that story about Hector Alcazar was a lie. Sam had then double-crossed Rafe and returned to recruit Nate to continue their childhood search. As Rafe tries to kill Nate, Sam intervenes and Nate falls from a cliff. Elena arrives to rescue Nate and the husband and wife give chase to Rafe in order to rescue Sam. Upon his rescue, Sam refuses to give up his search for Henry Avery's treasure and decides to leave his brother. Nate chases after his brother and eventually discovers the ship of Henry Avery in a giant cavern. Aboard the ship, Sam is collecting treasure when he accidentally triggers a trap, pinning him under rubble and setting the entire ship ablaze. When Nate boards the ship, he is confronted by an obsessive Rafe, who challenges him to a sword fight. Nate ends up killing Rafe and freeing Sam. The brothers escape Libertalia and are flown home by Sully's plane. With the adventure in Libertalia over, Sam and Sully team up for a new job together. Nate and Elena return home and, using some of Avery's gold that Sam had given them, them, they buy a salvage company to run together. Years later, the business is a huge success, and Nate and Elena have a teenage daughter named Cassie. When Cassie discovers relics from her parents' past adventures, Nate sits his daughter down and recounts to her the epic adventures of the Drake family.